In this video, we're gonna figure out the best number of sets you should do for achieving the best gains. Let's get to it. Now, if you have been following fitness science in recent years, you've probably learned about something called training volume, a very straightforward but also science-supported training concept. In short, training volume is the total load lifted for any given exercise and commonly quantified by multiplying the amount of sets, reps, and weight lifted. Now, in the science, greater volume does generally lead to greater gains, but with drastically diminishing returns at higher volumes. So, our ultimate goal then would be to adjust our volume to a point where we can achieve a solid amount of gains without it becoming very inefficient. And that's where sets come in. Just think about it for a moment. Out of the three factors, reps, sets, and weight, which will impact volume the most by adding just one or two to it? In fact, in studies investigating volume directly, many times, but not all the time, they simply change the number of sets the subjects perform when prescribing different levels of volume. That said, as you become stronger, the weight you lift will obviously increase, which makes weight the better factor to consider when making gradual increases to volume over time. But before that, we do have to figure out the number of sets. So what would be the so-called best number of sets to do? Now for you guys that just want an easy answer for some decent gains, then I would say performing 10 to 16 sets per muscle group per week is probably sufficient for most people. But of course, if you are more into some caveats, nuances, and personalized considerations, or you know, the old it depends factors, or if you find yourself as part of the 20% of people that don't respond well to 10 to 16 sets, then there is a bit more to figuring out the best number of sets for you to do. First to clarify, all this volume talk so far is mostly about muscle gains. For strength gains, the principle of specificity applies. In short, to lift heavy, you need to train heavy, like training between 80 to 100% of your one rep max. Volume does still play a role though, and a portion of strength does require more muscle, so it still kind of goes hand in hand. But now, let's get to some things that might actually affect the number of sets you do. First is whether you train close to failure. When talking about how many sets to do, we're usually referring to hard or effective sets and not things like warm-up sets. Hard sets are typically sets where you lift close to the point that you physically cannot do any more reps, or in short, lifting close to failure, about one to three reps shy of it. Training close to failure is very important and arguably just as important as sufficient volume. But if for some reason you cannot train close to failure, say for the sake of safety or minimizing fatigue, then increasing volume by adding maybe one or two extra sets can provide some buffer for it. But best case is to train close to failure whenever possible. Another thing to consider is the amount of time you're resting between sets. If you're not recovering enough between sets by resting, say, only 30 to 60 seconds, then you're gonna end up lifting fewer and fewer reps for each subsequent set, which cuts down your volume. Best case is to rest more, like two to three minutes between sets, especially for bigger compound lifts, so you can do more reps per set. But if for some reason you have to rest very little, then again, adding more sets can offset some of the drop in performance. Frankly, this is a pretty inefficient way to train. I wouldn't do it unless you really have to. More rest is better. Yet another thing to consider is training frequency, which doesn't exactly change the number of sets you do, but how you distribute them. To keep things short, training each muscle group two to three times per week seems to be the best for gains. So with 10 to 16 weekly sets, that's about three to eight sets per muscle group per workout. Now, if you really want to get into the weeds, then you can also consider something called set ratios. You see, for compound exercises, the muscle groups involved in it aren't all used to the same capacity. Certain muscle groups will do relatively less work than others. However, we typically count the compound sets as full sets for these muscle groups, even though the set didn't work the muscles enough to be considered a hard set. Because of that, some propose the idea of using set ratios. In short, we should use smaller ratios like 0.5 to 1 or so when contributing sets to a muscle group that did less work in a compound. That then means that we'll either need to add more sets to the compounds to bring the set count up or do extra accessory sets targeting that specific muscle. But the problem is we're not great at knowing exactly which muscle should use different set ratios, let alone what ratio to actually use. It's still important though to acknowledge the fact that muscles are worked differently in compounds. So we might have to use a bit of critical thinking here. It's not an exact science, but if you feel that certain muscle groups aren't getting enough work, then adding more sets or more accessories can help. 
And lastly, perhaps the most essential thing to consider in terms of sets, volume, and really everything is you. When we talk about all the fun science and data, you gotta keep in mind that we are talking within the realm of averages. However, when it comes to volume, the individual results making up that average can vary significantly. For example, in a 2019 study, some individuals in one group were actually able to achieve greater muscle gains than some individuals in another group that lifted five times more volume. However, we wouldn't know that if all we looked at were the averages, where the higher volume group did achieve greater gains, on average. So really, what determines the best amount of sets to do will be how you personally respond to it. You might be the few that need very little volume, or the unfortunate few that needs way more volume than others. It's gonna come down to you experimenting, comparing your progress, and most importantly, giving things enough time to play out. It doesn't get more it depends than that. But before you get scared about figuring things out yourself, let's break down everything together. Remember, the weekly 10 to 16 set range for each muscle group is still a good place to start. I would even start off with only 8 sets if you're not used to the level of volume. However, in certain situations, bumping up your sets to something like 12 to 20 sets might be helpful, especially if you're not training close to failure or resting very little in between your sets. On top of that, adding more sets can be a way to push through training plateaus or build up any muscles that are lagging behind. And again, for some people, adding more sets is not so much an option, but a requirement if they don't respond well to lower volumes. That said, it's probably not a good idea to try to squeeze all of your weekly sets into one single session. Instead, it's better to spread them out to two or three workouts per week. Also, keep in mind that for compound exercises, some muscles involved might not be sufficiently trained. Adding some accessory sets for those muscles or adding more sets to your compounds might be good ways to compensate for it. Now, if you do add more sets, remember that there will be diminishing returns at higher volume levels. It will be up to you on how much more volume you're willing to do for what might amount to only a fraction of additional gains. Oh, and of course, I cannot forget about recovery. More volume means more fatigue, which naturally means more recovery needed. There are a few ways to approach this. One is to take a week or so off from training completely once your performance starts dipping. Or you can also plan for it ahead of time, maybe once every six weeks or every 10 to 12 weeks if you're a beginner. Another recovery option is to deload, where instead of a full break, you still train but reduce volume by about 50% for about a week. And finally, another recovery option is to reset or cycle your set volume. Instead of training 20 plus sets every single week, perhaps dial it back down to 10 to 12 weekly sets for the next month and then slowly build back up to the higher set count. Kind of like a periodization with your sets. Managing fatigue is probably the most underrated aspect of training, so I definitely suggest that you pay particularly close attention to it, cause it's not always about busting your booty, no matter how satisfying that muscle pump feels. Good luck with your training. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a voluminous thumbs up and share it with your set-loving friends. Subscribe for more and let me know what you think in the comments. As always, thank you for watching and don't forget to get your protein.